I titled today's mind map, The Flow of Relationships. Now, this discussion is based on some notes from the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Now, he says there are important factors that we want to keep into consideration as far as quality of life goes, maintaining our flow in different areas of our life how we go about experiencing the work that we do, which we've been discussing all throughout. We also value solitude and our relations with others. So when it comes to relationships with others, we want to keep into consideration time with ourselves, connecting with ourselves in moments of solitude to recognize the completion within ourselves and have that express in a harmonious way with our relationships. And also, have those moments and experiences in relationships to contribute to your reflections and experiences in solitude. For example, while we're in solitude, we reconcile with ourself and our vision. We look at different experiences that we have with others while in relationships. And we say, these experiences that I had with this other person, are they really true to how I am, which is how I want to live? Discover the thinking patterns, and if those thinking patterns are true, the beliefs are true to how we are, we can let go of them. We experience this through relating with others, and as a result, we value to a higher degree our moments of solitude. Through this, we also build a deeper relationship with our intuition. As mentioned many times, how does a person discover the kind of relationships that they truly want to have? Certainly, we can be inspired by others. However, what we will find as we continue down this pathway is that we know within ourselves how we want to experience relationships with others, personal, romantic, business relationships. And although there may be many opinions on how relationships should be, ultimately what we find the greatest fulfillment, joy, happiness is in the relationships that we define ourselves via intuition that we personally would consider to be ideal. Thus, I want to further encourage this. In moments of solitude, we can also relax and rejuvenate so that when we do experience our moments with each other, we show up ready to enjoy those moments and we don't find ourselves further being drained by the experience, which could lead to certain thinking pattern conclusions about the other person, which are not true and accurate to how we are. We also develop in moments of being in solitude, and this could be in meditation, going for a walk, a person can ride a bike, or they can go to a park with themselves, sit down, contemplating the deep nuances of wisdom in a plant, for example, as we discussed last week. I'll put a link in the description to that video. What ends up happening as a result of this is that a person genuinely enjoys being with themselves. And as we've been discussing, when a person realizes that they're complete, or we could say enjoy, genuinely so, that time with themselves, what ends up happening is it plays out as harmonious relationships in whatever shape or form. Relationships are seen as in cooperation with each other. Relationships are seen in correspondence with how we truly are inside. They're experienced that way, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We could even say, if you want to get even more poetic, that they are reflections of the art in mind. Now he says, the ultimate opportunity for the ability to control the quality of experience is what a person does in solitude, with no external demands to give structure to attention. A person who rarely gets bored who does not constantly need a favorable external environment to enjoy the moment, tends to enjoy a creative life. And I would say from experience of working with this information over the years, 
tends to have a deeper appreciation for relationships because they have a deeper appreciation for themselves in moments of solitude. Now, relating with others in whatever shape or form has many benefits as well. We reconcile with others through conversation, through dialogue, in relation to our goals, visions, their goals, their visions. One of my favorite conversations to have with another person is, what do you desire? What are your goals? What are your visions? How do you truly want to be? And we have a conversation. We discuss with each other. And from there, we share insights, perspectives, ideas that are operating from that premise. We're able to look beyond the opinions and get into the facts in imagination of how it truly is. Identify how it truly is and encourage those attributes. Number two, we also, via mastermind, connecting with others, the individuals connect to intuition together and it's encouraged together. They also can relax, rejuvenate, have some fun in relationships, enjoy time together, do the activities that they genuinely want to do, thus enjoy being with others, genuinely, each other. So we see the relationship here between solitude and finding joy and happiness with solitude, as well as finding joy and happiness as a result of experiences with others, seeing them actually as one, seeing them as harmonious. So how does this play out ideally? Well, what I found is that a person wants to dedicate time for themselves and develop that relationship with themselves, reconciling with themselves. I recommend the opportunity to discover the subconscious thinking patterns in relation to what we're identifying with, that which we are unconsciously saying I am too, that is not necessarily true to how we are, let go of those thinking patterns in moments of solitude, connecting to intuition, relax, rejuvenate, have some fun, enjoy being with yourself. It could be going for a drive, and for me, one of my favorites, working out at the gym. These are moments of solitude where I have my headphones on, I'm listening to music, and I'm deeply engaged in the mind and muscle connection. I have this relationship that I'm building with myself the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual relationship through exercise. And what this does for a person is it elevates their completeness within. As we've been discussing in relationship with the Neville Goddard discussions, we are complete in imagination, and you have the ability to select whatever you desire to see as a result of commitment in imagination. And through this process of enjoying your time, genuinely so, with yourself, you actually discover what you truly love and commit to it. It's far easy for me to commit to, in my imagination, that which I love. In the obvious and nuanced sense, I recommend watching that video I did last week. I'll put a link in the description to it, in which we discussed a rose and a Porsche. So in relationship with others, when a person finds this kind of joy and fulfillment, when it comes to being with themselves, they find it's easier to be who they are, truly and authentically, without attachment or wanting things from another person, but rather the relationship becomes harmonious in a fair mutual way. If a person needs some assistance, you are gladly there because you're complete within to provide them the assistance, vice versa. Collaboratively, the relationship reconciles to higher degrees of being how they truly are. And so this is a flow-based way of being with ourselves, with others. We can find flow in our work. Moments of solitude for me is the work that I do. Much of what I do is in solitude as far as the work that I do. And I genuinely enjoy being there and I love being there. So to contribute to this, I created the flow series in which it articulates the different ways that we can find flow, get into the flow, find flow, maintain flow in what we do. I recommend doing that. I'll put a link in the description to the video series. What ends up happening then is when a person experiences flow in their moments of solitude when they're doing their deep work, when they're by themselves, they find that they have a lot to, we could say, bring to the table when it comes to relationships. The other person feels that degree of completion with each other, vice versa. You'll also notice that you seem to attract others that also do the same thing. Well, maybe not the same activity as far as work goes, but they go about their work in the same way. I meet many professionals, entrepreneurs, artists, 
who have the same kind of relationship. In different stages of the journey where I didn't reconcile to that degree, I noticed it was more force-based. See, one of the things that I always encourage on this journey is we can get to the destination in a force, stress-based way because they unconsciously believe it has to be that way. Or we can get there in a fun, flow, playful way or any varying degree. You have the ability to actually select. Now that we have brought a higher degree of conscious awareness of what's going on as far as the matters of the subconscious mind go, we recognize that we can change whatever we would like, identify the thinking patterns, what we are unconsciously saying I am to, and change the thinking patterns, or more accurately put, identify with the true and accurate thinking patterns of how we truly are. And so he says here, to provide flow, a relationship can benefit from having mutually relatable goals. Some of these goals might be very general and long-term, such as planning a particular lifestyle to building an ideal home. Same is to be said about business relationships, personal relationships. If those involved with the relationship have a mutually beneficial goal, they will find that they're having a lot more stimulating conversations, inspiring discussions, and they'll be reconciling thinking patterns. Speaking of which, I want to discuss divergent and convergent thinking. So let's diverge into this topic here to discuss divergent, convergent, and lateral and bring it back into our conversation for further relatability. So we've got divergers, convergers, and lateral. So consider divergers on one side of the spectrum like to draw upon many possible solutions, and they are explored in a short amount of time and unexpected connections are drawn. So these are individuals that tend to see things from many different perspectives. And although it's not necessarily that a person is a diverger or a converger. There are moments where they're diverging or converging. However, some seem to be more on the side of divergent because that's where they really enjoy to be. So they will pick professions and relationships where they can allow themselves to be who they truly are, which is more on the divergent side, which is then, let's say, to be able to encourage seeing things from many perspectives. So these are individuals a lot of times find the greatest degree of harmony with partners who actually encourage their divergent ways of being, seeing things from many different perspectives, coming up with many different ideas, radical ideas even. Then we got the convergers. Convergers are interested in coming up with a lot of times single, well-established answers for application. And so what we want is a reconciliation because which one is better, divergent or convergent? Well, actually, one's not better than the other. They're both valuable. I have friends that I would consider to be more on the diverger side. And then I have friends that are more on the converger side. And I enjoy conversations and discussions with both of them equally because the divergers help stimulate, in my own imagination, many different ways of looking at reality. And it expands my way of being. It also puts me more in a fluidity of mind. And the convergers help me take those ideas and put it into a system, into a process, into a business, and so forth. So I like to hang out with divergers and then flip over to the convergers and back to the divergers and back to the convergers. And actually, I also like activities that are more divergent, like the arts and dance. And I also like convergent activities, like a set morning routine or a specific workout plan. Although I could switch my workout plan, or I could talk to a friend who's a diverger in the space of fitness and they can give me radically new workout routines that I don't normally include in my workouts into my workouts. And so there's benefits there. And why would I do this? Because what I find is that this encourages lateral thinking. This is the harmony. So again, what's better, solitude or being around people? Well, you make that decision what it is for you. What I like to do is have a harmonious relationship within between solitude and also being with others. A nice ratio. I determine the ratio based on how I feel. So in regards to that, I get to be how I truly am. I get the benefits of letting go of rigidity, unnecessary rigidity and biases in mind to further expand my fluidity of mind, thus coming up with many different nuanced ideas on how to apply it, different ways of living, etc., and then also being able to take that information, that creativity, and express it in a form of creative expression, be it a business, arts, conversation with another person, etc. 
And so then we have a lateral way of being, which is lateral ways of being leverages both indirect and creative approaches. It works with both the divergent and convergent perspectives at the same time. And ideas are solutions for challenges that may not be immediately obvious, end up being discovered through intuitive thinking, feeling approaches. This is also facilitated by a neurotransmitter that's released when a person gets into the flow and maintains the flow. And so if you think, sir, if a person wants to reconcile to a higher degree of completeness within, they will actually value the divergent perspectives of those that think more divergently. They will value the convergent perspectives and those that think more convergently. And as a result, they'll experience more of a lateral approach. This doesn't mean that they're completely balanced 50-50 in divergent and convergent, but rather that they can flex. They can go from more divergent to convergent to divergent to convergent. And then from there, there is a massive amount of creativity. And in relationship with others, the conversations and the experiences that you have with your friends, personal life, business partners, is so much fun. It's so much joy. It's so creative. It's also very purposeful. And everyone around you, you'll notice this, wants to be around you because this is such a powerful magnetic energy as a result of this, which, by the way, is also facilitated by neurotransmitters. Again, I mentioned, I discussed this in a previous video. I'll put a link in the description expanding upon the neurotransmitters. But the one that I want to discuss here, reemphasize, I've brought it up before, is anandamide. So anandamide is a neurotransmitter that is released while you're in flow states. It elevates your mood, it relieves pain, and it's also been proven to amplify lateral thinking, the ability to link these seemingly disparate ideas together. Anandamide is a neurotransmitter and was the first endocannabinoid to be discovered. It participates in the body's endocannabinoid system by binding to cannabinoid receptors, the same receptors that the psychoactive compound THC in cannabis acts on. The name anandamide was inspired from the Sanskrit word ananda, which means bliss. And so let's bring this into conversation and relationships with others. You'll notice that a nice harmonious flow-based conversation and activities and relationship components will have both the divergent and convergent aspects in it. A diverger might say, well, that's one way of doing things, but here are some other ways of doing things. And then what we can say is, that's interesting. Perhaps you've never seen it from their perspective like that before. And it doesn't mean you have to do it the way that they said it. However, what ends up happening is we encourage that kind of communication and thinking. And what we notice as a result of encouraging it, an idea is brought up that's mutually beneficial, that can be applied to these other things we're talking about here. Same is to be said about convergent. Let's say a person is giving many ideas a convergent person or someone that is more on the lateral side, let's say, and is looking to converge to bring the relationship into a deeper harmony towards a goal, a vision, or a definite chief aim, mutually beneficial, they could end up converging. They say, okay, well, let's take this idea and let's put it into a project. Or let's set a date in which we're going to commit to that. Or let's take this and turn it into a business or something like that. And so let's go back to number one here in relationship with the diverger, converger, and lateral. To provide flow, which is a harmonious relationship between diverge, converge, and lateral, a relationship can benefit from having mutually relatable goals. Some of these goals may be very general and long-term, such as planning a particular lifestyle to building an ideal home. And it's important to, while we're relating to each other, which by the way, if you're maintaining your flow by harmonizing solitude time and time with each other, You'll notice you'll have more of a lateral style communication, flow-based communication, which could include moments of radical, even divergent thinking or perspectives in conversation. A lot of times you'll see this happens automatically. So, so imagine a dance between two people where they're dancing and it seems very flow-based and all of a sudden someone makes a sudden move, a divergent move, and the other partner is able to, because of the fluidity of mind, calibrate to that move. And as a result, everyone that's watching that says, wow, what a beautiful performance. That's a result of valuing the convergent, divergent, and lateral, which again, happens automatically when you make flow a priority. That's why I always suggest 
make Flow a priority because all of this stuff happens automatically. This has been my experience. When I committed to making Flow a priority in everything that I do, and I started to a higher degree experience these things that I'm talking about and also be able to discuss it and explain it based on my reference experience of working with myself and others in relation to this in a broad array of applications. Personal life, business life, career, a lot of times it tends to be in the entrepreneurial space in conversation and relationship with team members. However, I've also seen this in my own personal life relationships with others. Number two, in addition to long-term goals, it's important to have a constant supply of short-term objectives. This may include going for a picnic, planning a vacation, playing board games, or even learning new skills together. We do this with ourselves and we do it with others to develop a higher degree of fluidity of mind and reconciliation of the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual within ourselves and in relationship with others. A person is part of a family or a friendship to the extent he invests psychic energy in goals shared with other people. In the same way, one can belong to larger interpersonal systems by subscribing to the aspirations of a larger community. So the effects of working with yourself in a way where you enjoy solitude and you value your divergent, convergent, and lateral aspects, and then have that play out as theater with others in relationships expands over to communities and beyond. What we notice is when individuals, let's say a group of two, are very much in the flow, people around them automatically also get into the flow. Think of a time where you went to a get-together or a party, for example, and you notice that there was a couple or two friends or something like that, that immediately when they stepped in the room and they were having this conversation and this experience with each other, you felt the energy and the whole room transformed into the flow. Right then and there, everybody got into the flow to such a high degree. And then what happens, let's say, is that group, the group of 10 individuals, which let's say eight of them weren't in the flow and two showed up and then all of them got into the flow. The group of 10 actually goes to like a nightclub or an event. They actually change the entire venue to match that energy. So this stuff that we're talking about, the flow of relationships here is extremely powerful. And if you go back to the beginning, as he states, how we experience the work that we do, our relations with others, and also the moments in solitude contribute. So how a person is by themselves when they're working in moments in solitude, if they maintain the flow. Number two, how they are in relationship as they maintain the flow, which is done by valuing, letting go of the rigidity in relation to which is better, divergent or convergent. You get better at it with practice. You can observe the thinking patterns in relation to biases in regards to one being better than another. Let go of it. Get into the flow. Be who you are, more accurately put. Watch the video that I did on manifesting your higher self now. This is also expression of that premise of being more who you are. You'll notice that all of this stuff happens automatic. The more you represent who you truly are, you identify with the thinking patterns that are true to how you are. These shall be the effects. What we want to do is, in moments of solitude, reconcile within ourselves, let go of the thinking patterns that are not true to how you are, identify with the thinking patterns that are true to how you are and your vision. Number two, connect to intuition. Number three, have some fun, relax, rejuvenate. Number four, enjoy genuinely, more so, every day, being with yourself. This translates into maintaining the flow to a higher degree and reconciliation between divergent, convergent, lateral, seeing them all as one. One's not better than the other. It's automatic. The answer is it depends. And the benefits then in the relationships, how it plays out is a greater degree of reconciliation, harmonious, fun, flow-based relationships with others, a connection to intuition via mastermind. And as a result, having more of a fun, relaxing, rejuvenating experience with others rather than stressful, which is a result of trying too hard rather than being who you are. The effects of working with this information is you'll recognize you need nothing you are everything within, and it expresses accordingly. There's nothing wrong with you. You are complete now, and it expresses accordingly. You allow yourself to go into the divergent, convergent perspectives. Lateral being is experienced to a higher degree. You recognize you are worthy of what you desire. You are one with what you desire. It's easier for you to let go 
in the experience of relationship with others because you have it all and there's nothing to lose. You've already proved it to yourself that it is that way in imagination. Reality is the affirmation in mind. And so as a result of it, a person automatically knows when they would like solitude time, they enjoy it. They don't feel needy in solitude time. They're happy to be by themselves. And when they're in relationship or in conversation or in discussion with others or moments with others, they feel that they don't need that either. They're happy with who they are there and the theater plays out automatically, which we call harmonious relationship. And they're able to flip between the two. And so what ends up happening is they have a more flow-based, harmonious journey with themselves and others. And the effects of that is they value divergent ways of looking at things. Number two, they also value the convergent ways of doing things. As a result, they actually feel more blissful, which part of that is the effect of anandamide. And so imagine this for a moment if you're a painter. You have a vision in your imagination. You express it. You paint it. And you lose yourself in your art. And upon reflection, you paint again. And again, you lose yourself in your art. And then you reimagine it again, and you express and re lose yourself in the art. We can say that's going from divergent to convergent to divergent to convergent. And through this cause and effect process of inward imagination to outward expression, it expresses as a reflection of love. This is the same thing that goes on with relationships. You'll notice this. The relationships automatically transform or show up to reflect the degree of completion within. Completion within plays out as harmonious, completion-based theater with yourself and others in relationship into higher degrees of realization. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, to the moments of solitude, I'm able to experience to a higher degree a reconciliation within myself of the divergent and convergent perspectives into lateral ways of being in harmony with both, with myself and my vision. This facilitates the thinking, feeling, connection to intuition as I enjoy, relax, rejuvenate, and genuinely experience the happiness of being with myself. When I connect with people, I recognize the feeling of completeness within. It plays out as other people showing up who also experience the completeness within. And as a result, we further reconcile through divergent, convergent, lateral conversations, further connecting to our intuition, enjoying, playing, rejuvenating, relaxing, and genuinely enjoying our time together, which further contributes to our work, which further contributes to our solitude, which further contributes to our definite chief aim, our goals, our vision, our work, our profession, and also relationships with others. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.